Homo naledi. Does it form part of our earliest ancestors, or is it simply a different species, a close relative alongside our ancestors? Can we with any credibility and surety say that Homo naledi formed part of the evolution process of modern humans, or was it merely a different species within the Homo genome, which followed its own parallel branch? These questions lead to a far greater question, one about the very origins of our species and the credibility of human evolution as we have come to know it. Have we in fact evolved at all in the way that scientists claim that we have, or is the story of our origins vastly different to anything that has been propagated? As we learn about Homo naledi, we will attempt to formulate some answers to these questions, or at least theories that could hopefully one day lead us to those answers. Let us commence our journey of discovery by unveiling who or what Homo naledi is. <laughs> In 2013, a group of scientists led by Lee Berger explored a cave system called Rising Star in the cradle of humankind, Marupeng, South Africa. In the Rising Star, they found their way into a chamber called the Dinaledi Chamber. It was a chamber that was incredibly difficult to access with only a narrow entryway. Within the Denaledi chamber, Berger's team made an amazing discovery, a collection of bones, which amounted to around 1,550 bones and teeth from at least 15 different individuals. The remarkable aspect of this find was that most of the skeletons were intact, which in the world of paleoanthropology is rare, as most times one or two bones of a single individual are found in a specific area. This created a vast specimen for studying purposes, as the 15 individuals were a broad range of different age and gender groups. A large team of scientists from the University of the Witwatersrand in Johannesburg, together with a massive number of international scientists, then studied the Homo naledi remains in an intensive six-week-long workshop, whereafter findings were published in an open access journal in 2015. This process was rather unusual in the paleoanthropology world, where studies are usually closed and last many years and access to findings is restricted. However, this study led to some very interesting discoveries about Homo naledi, which has further led to many new questions and speculations in the story of our human genome and our assumed evolution process. Another factor that has created a lot of interest concerning the Homo naledi find is what the team did not find in the Denaledi chamber. There was next to no other animal remains alongside that of Homo naledi, with the exception of the remains of a single bird. There were also no archaeological remains suggesting any activity that would be expected to be found alongside the remains of a group of hominids. No tools, no evidence of fire, even though this was a very dark, secluded section of the caves. Absolutely nothing that could indicate any possible hominid activity. The results of the study of Homo naledi were very fascinating and brought about a certain amount of controversy. The anatomical characteristics of Homo naledi provided contrasting features. The skeletal structure was certainly archaic, closely resembling those of various ape species. However, they also presented various modern features more closely related to those of modern-day humans. The more archaic features included a height ranging between 144 to 148 centimeters and a weight of 40 to 56 kilograms. The size of their skull was very small, suggesting they had a brain between one-third and a half the size of the modern human brain. In contrast, some of the skulls contained endocasts, imprints of the brain, and these indicated a brain more similar to that of later hominins. They shared certain adaptations suited to climbing, like those of earlier hominins, such as long arms and fingers, as well as a flared ribcage and pelvis. Controversially, they had modern wrists, ankles, hands, feet, and teeth, like those of Homo sapiens. This indicated that Naledi walked more upright like modern humans and potentially ate and manipulated objects in a similar style to us. Do these features suggest that perhaps Naledi was perhaps capable of similar behaviors to those of modern human beings? The discovery of Homo Naledi brought about further questions relating to human evolution as we have come to know it. 
The first being, where exactly does Homo naledi fit into our human evolution tree? This is rather difficult to answer, as there is conflicting theories and evidence about the dating of Homo naledi. At first, it was believed that naledi evolved around 2 million years ago, which would put them far back right in the earliest time period of human evolution. This theory would make sense considering the archaic features of the fossils found. However, in 2017, a discovery was made that rocked this boat. Dates were obtained from the teeth of Homo naledi, dating them at approximately 300,000 years ago. This finding was rather confusing, considering the archaic features of the fossils. Out of this confusing information arose a new theory. It was theorized that perhaps Homo naledi was a species that had somehow become isolated from its counterparts and that it did not evolve as rapidly as some of its Homo relatives. Basically, it is believed that naledi seems to have developed according to its own evolutionary path, one which is separate and at the same time parallel to those of its homonym relatives. This led to other new theories about human evolution. The presence of Homo naledi at its point in history would suggest that human evolution and the evolution of other species in our genome was rather fragmented instead of following a linear timeline as once believed. This view challenged the previous notion in paleoanthropology that suggested that as the need and environment called for various adaptations as larger framed, more modern structured hominins emerged, the smaller, more archaic ones became obsolete and thus went on to extinction. Homo naledi, however, throws these beliefs upside down, pointing to a very different narrative. Other vital issues arose surrounding the issue of how the Homo naledi remains came to be in the very difficult to access Denaledi chambers of the caves at Marupeng. Once again, this question gave rise to various theories but no concrete answers, at least not yet. The first theory is that Homo naledi lived in this chamber of the caves. However, there is not enough evidence to support this notion. The facts seem to counteract this idea. The entrance to the Denaledi chamber was very narrow and would not allow easy access in and out of the chamber. This is coupled together with the fact that there were no other archaeological finds in the chamber, which negates the theory of Homo naledi having lived there. The other theories are varied and only vaguely plausible. Could flooding have carried the bodies into the chamber? The answer would seem to be no, as the geology in the caves does not indicate flooding. Could predators have dragged or chased them into the chamber, or could they have fallen into it? Again, these theories do not seem likely, as the remains show no evidence of wounds or injuries, and there is also no vertical drop into the chamber. The presence of various individuals of different ages and genders would seem to point to the deliberate placement of remains in the dinner lady chamber. Did Homo naledi use this chamber as a burial site? This is a highly controversial theory, considering how small their brains were, which would negate the other human beings later in the evolutionary story. The list of theories could be inexhaustible, and the fact is, at this point, there is no concrete way of answering these difficult questions. To make the matter even more perplexing, in 2017, a separate chamber was discovered in the rising star caves. This was named the Lissedi Chamber, and what was so important about its discovery was the presence of more Homo naledi remains. However, what made this case different to the discovery of the Denaledi Chamber was the fact that other remains were found with Homo naledi, the remains of rodents and mammals, although, once again, there were no tools found. This discovery led to further and more complex questions, ones that still tease the minds of the paleoanthropology world and challenge the ideas surrounding human evolution as it was known before the discovery of Homo naledi. As we draw our day in history to a close, we must return to the fundamental questions at the crux of this matter. Can we, with any credibility and surety, say that Homo naledi formed part of the evolution process of modern humans? or? Was it merely a different species within the human genome which followed its own parallel branch? Along with it, the far greater question, have we in fact evolved at all in the way that scientists claim that we have? Or is the story of our origins vastly different to anything that has been propagated? It would seem there is no sufficient evidence to conclusively answer these questions. All hope is not lost, however. Perhaps the fact that we do not have the answers is not such a bad predicament to be in. Perhaps it is a lesson that we should all learn to keep questioning, to keep studying, to continue discovering, and perhaps one day this journey of discovery will guide us to a deeper understanding and a clearer picture of the origins of humanity.